Hey, I'm Scott with AquaQuest, and today in our latest pitch video, we're going to talk about the Plow Point Shelter and how it might work for you in your next excursion out in the bush. Hey, I'm Scott with AquaQuest. Today we're going to focus on the plow point configuration which you see here. This is a diamond configuration in that the ridge actually goes from corner to corner. So it is not a square footprint but a diamond. Now that has some benefits and downfalls. We're going to run through how this pitch might work for you in your next trip out of the bush and some tips and tricks as to how to ensure it's going to function as intended when the weather gets foul. Now, some of the benefits with this configuration is that, number one, it requires very minimal equipment to set up, okay? So what we have here basically in this particular setup is one short piece of cordage, maybe four feet long max, and then we have one, two, three stakes at the other corners. Now, I've added an additional two stakes just for stability, in case that wind comes up, it's going to keep everything pinned to the ground. But conceivably, you can just do this three stakes, one piece of cordage. So the name plow point, it refers to the general shape of this particular configuration. So imagine this to be a plow plowing the ground. So the plow point is actually the back corner that's staked directly into the ground. It is creating that wedge that's going into the ground as if it is plowing it, okay? Now, it's actually important to remember that because if conditions aren't ideal and you have some wind and rain coming up, you really need to make sure you pitch this tarp pointing in the right direction. And the easy memory for this is that the plow point points into the wind, okay? It makes total sense. So that corner is going to be facing the wind. So any wind or wind-driven rain is simply going to dissipate off that angle, drift along the sides with absolutely no threat to your tarp. Only the absolute most extreme wind conditions and poorly staked out tarp is going to be threatened uh, in windy circumstances with this pitch. It's really nicely angled to shed wind, okay? So, conditions aren't great. Plow point needs to be pointed into the wind. The other benefit of that is also quite obvious. So, we'll have a little protected space just outside our tarp as the elements are shed here. So, even having a small fire or having your cooking stove outside of the opening of the tarp is probably still going to be feasible except in the absolute most terrible conditions, okay? So you're creating a little bit of usable outdoor space by ensuring you pitch this into the wind. It's an important consideration and again, there are certain circumstances where this pitch maybe just isn't the best choice, right? So if you have swirling wind or unpredictable conditions, you have to understand you have an open face here. And if nature can get in there, you're going to get wet, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So if conditions are really poor, maybe you want to look at a more enclosed configuration for that particular night. It may not be as comfortable or livable, but if it's only a temporary situation, then that's probably a better choice than to try to live with an open face configuration where all your gear and your person are gonna be soaked the next day, okay? So we are going to accomplish today's pitch using the AquaQuest Guide 10 foot by 10 foot square tarp, okay? So this is AquaQuest's lightest weight tarp, which is a 40D ripstop nylon. Now, again, there are lighter tarps out there. There's tarps that use 20D fabric and even 15D. Um, personally, 40D is about as light as I'm comfortable with. And I'm comfortable with that on a couple of fronts. Number one, I know the durability of this thing. 40D is a strong material while still being light. And so for me, 
I'm not willing to compromise much further. I'm not willing to risk a lighter weight fabric than this in most circumstances, okay? And the other thing why it's worth it to me is just, it's still pretty darn light. Like this is a packed, I packed this myself. This is not factory sealed or anything like that. You can see I could squish it down to about that size. Um, it's very, very lightweight. So this one, the 10 by 10, weighs just over a pound. It's about a pound and a quarter. So it doesn't add much weight to your kit. It doesn't take much space in your packing. Um, again, I really like the guide. Uh, here it is. Let's, uh, let's bust it open here. So again, this tarp, it's dual waterproof coated. So it's a, a silicone tarp with a PU coating. So the outside surface is silicone imbued and the inside surface has, again, a polyurethane coating for extra waterproofing. Um, it's a bit slick, it's relatively quiet, it's easy to manage. Again, for me, it ticks all the boxes of a lightweight tarp that's not going to let me down when I really, really need it most. So check out the guide on our website comes in five different sizes, 10 by 10 being an extremely versatile size because it has all those axes of symmetry, right? Because it's not just uh, a rectangle, it's a square. So doing a diamond configuration like we're doing today becomes a possibility. You can do these types of things with rectangular tarps as well. It's just not as intuitive. Um, with a square, you can really set it up in your mind and see where things are going as you begin your pitch, okay? So again, it's a diamond pitch. So we can sort of spread out our tarp as such. And I'm going to be using this tree to affix my peak. And we'll be going back in this direction for the back corner, okay? So we can get a rough idea of our layout here. This is about the footprint that this setup is going to consume. So there we are. Again, this site being a bit undulating, I know this setup can handle it. I know I can um, ripple the perimeter over all these undulations here without any problem. So. Stage one, step one. I've put a uh, short length of cordage up in a tree here. I just used a uh, branch to assist me in getting up a little higher beyond my reach. And what I really, all I really wanna do is take the front corner and tie it up, you know, approximately comfortable with my highest reach on tippy toes. I don't have to do more than that. Um, Pretty simple. There we are. So stage one is done. Now you can see there's a bit of a breeze. So before I go to stage two, this is actually a good gauge of how, oops, look at that. This is actually a good gauge of how the wind is operating here, right? So this is a nice wind sock. So I can see the wind is blowing in this direction, but it's also a fairly mild breeze. So if this were uh, more serious circumstances and a stronger wind, I would use this to help guide where my uh, plow point, which again is the low point, needs to go. So I could whip this down in this direction and know exactly where I found the sweet spot to uh, shed the wind. Today I'm not worried about it, so I'm going to set up according to my comfort. And so I'm going to take this back corner. I'm gonna need my hatchet here to help me with my stake. And I'm going to stake out the back corner. That's stage two. So this particular ground in a fir forest basically. So it sheds a lot of duff, a lot of needles and a lot of cones. 
and uh, that doesn't break down fairly quickly. It's almost like it's really pillowy and airy. So your steak won't grab into that. That offers no resistance. So you may have to dig down an inch or two until you find more dense, stable earth. And that's where your steak is actually going to, uh, to have uh, some holding power. So it's rooty and cobbly beneath that airy top layer. And that's good for holding in a steak. So I've got that in place, nice and taut. The next step, so step three, is to peg out one wall corner. I'll do the one closest to the camera to commence. So, just going to, again, there's a few bushes, some bracken, a few hills here but it's nothing I can't work around. Um, clear the ground a little bit. Try to get a nice taut line there. And I may need to adjust once I get that uh, next peg in, but this feels pretty good to commence with. And in we go there. One, tie it. Two, peg the back. Three, Peg one wall, and now we're on to stage four, which is to peg the other wall on this side. Okay, it's catching a bit of wind here, but again, it's a very, very minor breeze. It's not gonna cause us any issues. So, wanna find a sweet spot where it's taut from the peak and taut from the back corner. Clear some of this fluffy, fluffy ground out of the way. See if I can find a place where this wants to bite. There we go. And in place. There we go. Now that is fundamentally it. We're done. Now, because I'm a bit of a stickler sometimes, and because I don't like doing things twice, if one of these uh, pegs should uh, pop out, I'm going to add two more pegs. And the place I'm going to add that is just in the middle of each side wall here. So there's a tie out at that location. And I'm going to, whoa, get a little bit deeper here. I mean, that's pretty spongy here. Oh, I found, uh, found something to bite into. So that's down in place and that's just holding everything. That's just taking some of the strain off the corners, a little bit more grip, um, a little bit more security. And you're not gonna be able to see me for this but I assure you, I'm doing it on the other side as well. I promise I'm doing it here too. Honestly, I'm not faking it. Can you hear it? It's actually happening. And so again, here it is. This is the plow point shelter. Really simple, really intuitive to set up. Um, I'm not sure the runtime of that. I imagine if I was going as quickly as I wanted, the whole thing would be done in about three minutes and that would include slinging that bit of cord up there. Um, yeah, but that's the fundamental approach to it. You could, again, guy out this middle part for added security and to make sure that ridge stays as uh, high and taut as possible. So in terms of the adaptability of this particular configuration, so you can see it's kind of lined up at a 45 degree angle. So that's pretty nice because I have a nice amount of headroom and usable space. I can easily enter and exit without having to crouch down until I get a little bit deeper inside that tarp, okay? So that's great for a lot of conditions. But if it gets a little bit nasty, or you want sort of a stealthier setup, you can certainly change the pitch of this angle so your tarp will be lower to the ground, 
less visible and you'll actually create a little bit more space side to side that way, okay? The wings will fly out as you lower this. So if we have it tall, you can see that we, we have a narrow space between the two walls, but as we lower it, we widen that space between the two walls, okay? So you may not have that luxurious headroom, you may have to crouch getting in and out, but you'll have a little bit more room in the wings to store your gear. And again, with really inclement weather, you'll be a little bit lower to the ground, a little bit more protected, okay? It's a little bit stealthier. So for the conditions I'm facing today, this 45 degree angle approximately is like perfect, okay? I have uh, protection if I need it. There's a chance of rain this evening, could come in. I'm still gonna be well protected. I have ample room to lay out inside. I have ample room for my gear. And I really wanna take advantage of this you know, beautiful vista I have here. There's a nice creek winding its way right in front of me. I can see across. Um, there's elk in the area. I haven't noticed any today, but maybe I'll get lucky. So I want to be more in touch with nature and this big opening, this airy space helps me do that, okay? Another one of those things that a tent just can't compete with tarps in is that you can be more in tune with what's going on around you. Um, I really like that with tarp camping. Um, and the adaptability, I could close this thing up tight if I really, really needed to. But on a nice day like today, I'm just gonna enjoy nature, keep myself part of it by having this big open window right in the entryway. So here I am inside the plow point shelter. Now I actually had to double check that I was indeed inside because it feels so airy. But in fact, I, my feet here are underneath the apex above me. So I am fully protected. If it were raining, not a drop would come down on me in, uh, in this position. And yet I have a full 180 degree view. Uh, I have enormous head height above me. I don't feel claustrophobic or like anything's looming above. It's just so nice to have this big airy window for conditions that are like today, which are admittedly beautiful and not challenging. Um, to sort of mediocre conditions when you have rain or mixed weather, this is absolutely fine for that. Um, so again, even in more challenging conditions, I still feel this is a really viable shelter option, provided you remember to consider the wind and put that plow point into it, okay? And make sure any push precipitation is going this way, so this space, again, remains protected um, and, and is a usable outdoor space for you, okay? So, again, really open. If I go back inside, you can see I have a, a sleeping bag set up here. I'm also on the ground sheet beside it. So let's say this is two people. You can see two people sleeping here. Uh, more than ample room uh, on the wings here. Great place for gear. Also like a mini vestibule area back here. You could store some more gear here. Obviously, uh, this for two people is uh, quite luxurious. I think you could do three no problem. Um, I think you could do four in a pinch. It's all what your comfort level is and what your circumstances demand. So depending on how you like to camp or what your particular trip looks like, um, again, this plow point can, can really flex with your needs, okay? So a lot of things going for it, very livable space, um, great ventilation. Well, that's it for me today. I'm gonna to get on with enjoying this beautiful scenery and day. Uh, I really appreciate you watching. Um, we're going to be releasing more setup videos as uh, time goes on, as well as a number of helpful tarp resource videos. So whether you're a tarp camper, uh, experienced or new, check out what we have to offer. Hopefully you'll find some, uh, some tips and tricks that will really help you out next time you're out in the bush. In the meantime, take care and stay safe.